So if I was hired as a head of quality for an enterprise organization, here's what I'd probably do in my first 180 days. And this would apply if you're hired at any senior position in any organization. The first thing you want to do is you want to figure out how things are done today. The second thing you want to do is you want to see where it can be optimized uh, inefficiency, where can we actually double down on improving quality in our outcomes. Quite a generalist thing, but what would you do on day one? On day one or week one, I really get together with my direct reports. So these are, you know, quality assurance managers, quality engineers, uh, quality man managers generally, and just kind of ask them three simple questions. The first one is kind of when you, for the programs you're running or for the services you're offering and you're trying to assure quality in that context, when you get business requirements or kind of requirements generally in the form of business specs, tech specs, et cetera, how do you work through that? What do you do? How do you update your QA plans? How do you up your, update your test suites? You know, how does that happen? Just, just help me understand that, number one. Number two really is an extension of that. Okay, for each step, let's itemize the time it takes. Let's itemize who is involved in that step, who needs to review stuff, internal or external. External might be suppliers, for instance. There might be a change in your terms of engagement, et cetera. You know, how, how does that work? Let's kind of codify that. Let's capture that. Let's put that into a kind of a set of uh, data. So you're building up a perspective. And then the third and final thing, and probably the thing that actually is really interesting because it uncovers a lot of, um, you know, sometimes kind of opportunity, is asking them very clearly, in the last 12 months, last 18 months, what, what kind of stuff has gone wrong? Um, where did we miss the mark on our kind of SLAs around quality? Uh, what happened? What was, what was the outcome? Was there scope creep involved in that? Was there kind of a delay in delivery? Just help me understand that. What you're trying to do is you're trying to spot issues, uh, issues for optimization. All we're really doing is a very simple kind of, you know, basic business process mapping exercise at this point. Maybe use Excel, Google Sheets, doesn't really matter. Just itemize it. Who's doing what? How long does it take? Is it working well? Any issues, any uh, particular blow ups or whatever. I'd also approach my peers. Now, you know, heads of quality will report into multiple different or may report into the CEO. They may report into the CTO, but I talk to my peers as well because the first part of this was really talking to my direct reports. They have a tactical perspective on life. My peers will have a more holistic, a strategic outlook. So they will be thinking, and I'll be asking them, you know, what kind of impact did it have on the business? You know, I'll be focusing in on how they think the team is working, what kind of, um, you know, cause and effect happened, any mistakes, any quality issues over the last, again, 12 to 18 months. So doubling down, figuring out was there operational impact? If so, quantify it. And then we now have a really nice perspective. We're ready to kind of move on. So this is about three, four weeks in. We've got our understanding of what's going on today. We're ready to move on and start to look at what can be optimized. Now, in my experience, when you're working with kind of you know, the, the quality kind of product intersection, or if you're in a services company, you're, you're trying to assure quality for services and service delivery. There's that kind of interchange between the business and typically what you're seeing there is business requirements docs. You're seeing technical docs. These are requirements and how they map to your kind of test beds, your test plans, your test specs, et cetera, is really where a lot can go wrong. And there's a lot of kind of low hanging fruit in that context that you can start to address. One of the biggest issues is that what's happening when you receive a set of requirements for a new product or system or extensive extension of existing systems. Typically, it's coming in an unstructured format. Typically, it's a Word doc or a PDF doc or a collection of these things. There is great opportunity to actually optimize that. So products like Visible Thread can help you move that unstructured content into a more manageable tabular based content so that you can then start to pin your test planning activities against that. You can do your data, your test data and so forth, your pre and post conditions. All that can be optimized dramatically because today what's happening in most cases is people are kind of, you know, copy pasting, copy pasting from an unstructured Word doc, putting it into a test plan. And then maybe they're managing off the Excel spreadsheet or maybe they're managing and pushing it into a downstream kind of a test planning automation system. But either way, there's generally tons of opportunity for optimization there. The second area that you'll find is that actually when you have changing requirements, again, that's an area of easy focus. It's easy to fix these things because ultimately it's about optimizing inefficient steps that are happening today. What's tending to happen today is a change happens, a change request comes in, people will try and manually uh, control F their way through the original documentation, figuring out where the impacts will be on the original documentation, and then updating 
their existing test plans. So again, optimizing that, speeding that up again with the product life visible thread can really, really supercharge that activity, making it highly efficient, 10x more efficient in terms of searching for interdependent requirements, dramatically updating the time it takes to push those requirements into your automated test system, or indeed if you're managing off Excel or Sheets or whatever it might be, that can be dramatically improved. So by the end of your 120 or sorry, 180 days, effectively you've got your as is process. You've identified the areas where you can improve. You can start to apply low hanging fruit types, automation solutions like visible thread. And what that mix means coming out of all that is that you've got a quick set of wins and you can assess discrete positive impact on the business.